I think we can have several futures, several scenarios, and I think they're ones well worth exploring and well worth thinking about. There's no question in my mind that we are reaching stability in the output of our raw materials. And many people in the forest industry tell me that even with sustained output of what we had before the recession, there will be probably 30% fewer people employed than there were prior to that. And that's part because of automation and um, the efficiencies that have been brought to the industry. We still have depra depressed commodity prices for our iron, for our copper, for our molybdenum. Some mines are open, some mines are closed. I don't believe that we can anticipate growing population support on those particular industries. So my view is that we've got to look and see what is happening in the transformation of economic activity and see if that helps us see where we put our eggs, if you like, but our investments in the future. Let me give you an example. In 1911 in this country, uh, uh, something in the order of 75% of all people were employed were in the production and distribution of goods. Now they may have been on the farm, they may have been in the mill, they may have been in the forest, they may have been in the mine, but three quarters of the gainfully employed were in that area and only 25% were in management in the services and everything else. By the time we got to the end of the war, we find that um, the goods component of our occupation force had decreased substantially. I'll look at my figures so I get them right. But still 57% of the people were involved in the production and distribution of goods. When we look at the 1981 census in Canada, and again just to look at my figures, we are down to 32%. Now what are all the rest of the gainfully employed doing? That becomes a very great question. They're providing services to business and services to people. They're providing experiences to people. And this reflects changes that we know are taking place if we think about it. Um, in 1946, if you looked at the average household expenditure, you would find that nearly all the income was spent on housing and on food, you know, shelter, food, and things of that nature. So, and what is shelter and what is food? These are goods, really. But if you look at the disposable income of those people who are working in the 1980s, you will find that up to a third of their income is essentially available for discretionary expenditures. And how are those people choosing to spend that? Because that's part of where you have an expansion of your economy. They're buying services. They're buying food, not through the grocery store, but in restaurants, fast food or gourmet, whichever you like. They're choosing to travel. Um, they are saying to themselves, I'm going to invest some of my time and my money on fitness or on health care because my life is worth something. I'm going to run for my life, as the, some of the slogans are that we see on the um, television and radio today. These are reflecting the transformation, if you like, of the household expenditures. And it becomes manifest on how people are working and so forth. The second area is in industry. At one time, you could just knock a tree down and you'd leave 30% of it in the woods and send off some timber somewhere. You can't afford to do that now. The question is asked, how can I use every inch and every pound of that commodity? That requires research and development. That includes means that we have to employ people to apply their intelligence to develop better products and better goods. Now, what I'm suggesting to you is that the here and now is that the majority of people are involved in intelligence, service, and experience industries. Now the question is, will they continue to grow and can they take up the unemployment slack that is being given up by the automation and so forth that's taking place in the industry? If they can, the prospects are good for employment and good for a city which is an intelligence-based and an intelligence-driven city. On the other hand, if those things don't happen, if they happen in other cities and so forth, and we are dependent only on our raw materials, then I don't think that we have got a very optimistic future. 